What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. So today I want to talk about Elliott Wave failures. But before I do, I just want to give you guys the chance to win the $5 in Litecoin or $10 in Crypto Bridge. The trivia question is this. Name a famous person that I spoke about in a previous video that said Bitcoin is a scam and blockchain offers nothing after 10 years of development. So remember, only answers to my Instagram post of Wednesday's video will be accepted for the giveaway. Good luck, everybody. And on to today's topic, Elliott Wave Failures. So this is Lesson 19 from Philicon, Elliott Wave Theory, Fibonacci Retracement and Extensions. As you can tell, he loved Elliott Wave Theory, so he's making like multiple videos about it at this point. And it's really about Elliott Wave Failures, and that's how you can build off onto the more advanced topic into Elliott Waves. Elliott Wave's failure is a critical indicator of bearish trend. The optimal situation is Wave 2 retraces to the 618 mark, the golden ratio. Going further indicates a potential bearish trend. But a failure where Wave 2 retraces below Wave 1 indicates there is a likely scenario for a further drop in price. So this is an example of the Elliott Wave. So this is the Motive Wave 1, the Corrective Wave 2, the Motive Wave 3, the Corrective Wave 4, and the Motive Wave 5. And now, as you can see, wave 2 retraces to the golden ratio, and this is where most people would like to buy in and expect a 1 to 1 extension of wave 3, or at least a 1 to 1, or maybe a 1 to 1.6 1 to 1 width, or, or even longer extension for wave 3, and make profits of that. That's the general idea of using Elliott waves. So, but what happens is if it retraces down to the 786 or below, it really indicates a potential bear situation, but more importantly, if it retraces completely passes wave 1, it is really an Elliott wave failure. At this point, the entire structure is broken down. You can't count the wave 1 as part of the Elliott wave that you were hoping that it would be. It might be part of some other Elliott wave. So potential stop loss can be placed at slightly below wave 1. So given that we don't expect wave 2 to completely retrace, we can always use this area right here, slightly below wave 1, the beginning of wave 1, as a stop loss area. So in case it does retrace completely, you, uh, you get stopped out. It might not be as far deep as a previous low, but it definitely is an option in my opinion. This is not something that Philicon mentioned, but it's an idea of mine just because of the pretty strict rule that uh, Elliott Wave have. Every time there's a failure, we need to go back to the recent lowest point and draw a fair retracement. Use the levels in the fib retracement to identify support levels. For example, if this particular wave 1 failed, you will have to find a lower point and draw a fib retrace from that lower point all the way back up to wave 1, the top, and then see what the support levels are. And then figure out what it actually retraced to, because in this case, this wave 1 failed. Again, it could be part of another Elliott wave. So if you use another a previous lower point and do a fib retrace, then you can find out where wave 2 is actually retracing to. If you use a lower point, it probably looked like you know wave two actually didn't retrace to over 100 percent, but probably retraced to like maybe a nil 0.5 or a nil 50 percent or a nil golden ratio. Now another thing is at the time of this recording, around February 11, 2018, Philicon doesn't believe 6,000 is a permanent support because it hasn't been tested multiple times. I mean, to me right now, in April 11th, two months later, it looks like it has established a support at this time because it's been tested three times since March 30th and it hasn't fell below the 6,000 mark. I mean, my realistic expectation is Bitcoin is around $3,000 in actual price value. That's not based on technical analysis at all, but at least give me, it does give a different perspective on the price of Bitcoin. So now there's a couple other things that Philocon covered and it gets really kind of confusing but because he didn't really go into details on these particular topics in this video. So one of them is the 335 structure, it's called a flat. So if you want to read about it, I have a link to this around here. Basically a 335 is, is how a corrective wave is set up. So instead of the normal 535 zigzag structure, so normally you see an ABC corrective wave, they're actually made of a 535 component. You will see instead of a 3 here, you see 5 different subwaves in here and then you have 3 in here and then 5 here. But in the flat, you will have only 3 waves in here, a 3 wave in B, and a 5 wave in C. And there are different types of flats as well. There's the regular flats, there's the expanded flats, and there are the running flats. Definitely read about it and learn about the guidelines because there's definitely, there's definitely a lot covered in the different types of flats. 
The next thing is the Elliott Wave double combo. The Elliott Wave double combo is another thing that he didn't really cover, but I have I have a link to it here in the whole section about Elliott Wave. But just go search for the correction combinations, and it should give you a general idea of what it's about. But again, the key thing is the correction combination. The reason why it forms is because of a Elliott Wave failure. So even if you don't read this whole entire thing, know that this double combo and this triple combo is caused by an Elliott Wave failure. And that's pretty much essentially the topic of today's video, Elliott Wave failures. And the last thing is a truncated C that Billicon mentioned. Again, I couldn't really find a truncated C. Most popular thing is a truncated fifth wave. And it's not quite a failure because a fifth wave can be shorter than the third wave. And it's normally, it's, third wave is the longest. So the fact that it's truncated, it doesn't mean that the Elliott wave itself is a failure, but it kind of relates to the whole entire theme of today's video that a failure is really because a wave doesn't go to the length that you expect it to, and that's why it failed, right? Or another case around where like wave two actually extends below wave one, that's another failure. But the idea is you don't expect the impulse wave to be shorter than the corrective waves, and it happens to be the case with all these Elliott wave failures. But definitely read up on the truncated fifth wave if you guys want to know more about that. And the last thing is, Philicon pretty much called it dead on, the bottom, on February 11th. He did the technical analysis and he and he called it. He said that Bitcoin would be at 7850. And then I went back, obviously, and checked the charts and he was right. It was at 7850. It just was flat right there for quite a bit of time before it broke out of this uh, downward trend. So. He called it. I mean, this stuff really does work. That's pretty much all I can say. I wish he covered these a little bit more. But I think he does cover them in later videos. I mean, I just took a quick peek right now. So lesson 20 is about Elliott Wave WXY, which really is just the Elliott Wave double combo. I'm really looking forward to lesson 20. But overall, I think lesson 19 is helpful to just introduce these terms, not necessarily expecting us to understand it just because there's just so much to learn. But it's good to do that additional research so that you understand it a little bit more what he's talking about. But anyway, guys, that's my video for today. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining. It isn't worth speculating. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.